similar to uh, how when you first walk into the exhibition, there's a section introducing you to what was happening in terms of the art scene in Egypt before the emergence of the Akhir Bikhti group. We wanted to include in the exhibition a little kind of excursion into what happens right after, in a sense around the same time, by showing a, a little kind of a presentation on another group of artists called the Contemporary Art Group. Why the contemporary art group? Because several of these group members started out with Ahi Liberté, and then at one point, they kind of moved on to create their own group, which is called the contemporary art group. And unlike Ahi Liberté, who were not at all interested in nationalism or in art for political propaganda or the construction of uh, you know, a state identity, these artists were very much interested in finding uh, a language that would help them create an art that is authentically Egyptian. Now, and this becomes even more uh, pressing and more prevalent in the work of this other group by the early 50s when Egypt experiences its revolution of 1952 and a lot of artists and intellectuals were actually thinking how can art become a platform to create an image of this new nation, this new republic that rebelled against its monarchy, that kicked out the colonial power. So there was a sense of pride, there was a sense of heightened nationalism and this contemporary art group, some of whose members started with went into that direction. And it was very important for us to show a little bit the aesthetic that they were adopting. They were working with a lot of motifs and the vernacular from local popular arts, from the national holidays of saints where you go to these fairs and you see these puppets and these magical tricks. So it was very much art that was coming from arts and crafts and popular kind of uh, motifs. Um, and they were not working in a surrealist aesthetic that we find in the Ahi Liberté group, but in something that was trying to be far more Egyptian or locally kind of um, inspired. I think what is really also interesting about this particular chapter is that you see a negotiation or a certain conflict, if you will, of artists. What does it mean to come from a certain place and how does it actually relate into your artistic practice? Do you want to do something that is completely um, universally relevant or do you feel it is important to do something that is recognized as, as national? And I think for Ari Liberté perhaps it was really very important to do a, a bit of both. So there is a globally universally language and there is something really globally and universally relevant but at the same time they were very much trying to find a local relevance and a local context to make sure it is actually understood by the average person so by anybody that can come and see the exhibitions and feel something and is feeling a certain call for a certain uh, action and what I think is very exciting is also and we see it also a little bit here in the other group is that many of them were very very young so it is really a group of young idealists that in many ways perhaps try to save the world a little bit. Uh, maybe they didn't quite succeed, but I think their message or their legacy is something that we felt was very important to write and preserve and show how current these concerns, whether they be political, whether they will be about how do I find a style that is relevant or how do I create art that is even mattering in a certain context. Um, I think that legacy is really exciting to us and to see these young artists doing this um, in Cairo in the 1930s and 40s shows us also how important it is to actually uh, look at their case. Mm -hmm.